and I love you nieces to pieces. We're on the east side of the structure and we're going around clockwise. Okay. So as we're over here on the east side of the structure, you'll notice the window casement is none the better for wear. It's not. None of it. None of it. Another thing that we'll notice here is on the siding. These butt joints, they're supposed to have flashing tape behind them. And it's hard for me to tell. I might be able to tell when I get on part of the roof. Not when we'll get on all of this roof, but um, it's hard to tell whether the butt joints were sealed as well. Primed. All three of these windows back here, but this is the worst one, the middle one. This smaller one over here. This one over here. Then we come along. And one thing that we notice here is Home ownership 101, all walls, all roofs leak, all walls leak. We designed them to shed water faster than they accept it. Those are called weep holes. And most of the time it's water vapor. The brick is porous. The brick is porous. Most of the time it's water vapor. If you have an event, I've seen a couple, and I hope you don't. If you have an event, water will come out of those. Those are weep holes. That's what they're designed for. Because brick does accept water. What we don't have is we pose over the wooden windows do not need brick. Brick over the window <laughs> do not need weep holes. The brick over the windows, they should have weep holes. Just like these. Just like these. They should have been there. Should have been there. Another thing that we should have had, and it's gonna be hard to see. Maybe I can get a better picture of it. And I'll try. But I'm not seeing Z-bar flashing over the windows. We pulls on these windows, Z bar flashing on these windows. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Rain gutters should discharge water away from the structure, several feet away from the structure. These these don't have it. These don't have it. How would you do this? Well, you could extend the rain gutter piping over here, and sometimes they have flexible. Long crew is going to be stepping on it. People are going to be tripping on it. You, know? you could have also gone into the ground and come out in the retaining wall. I mean, there's a, got a weep hole in the retaining wall. So you, you could have brought them in uh, below grade. To, uh, so there's a couple of different ways to address it. Uh, the long, flexible snakes, which are kind of silly looking. You know, or you could, you know, however you want to do it. But it wasn't done right. It wasn't done right. Now, Lawn sprinkler heads should not discharge, or should not, you know, be, have been placed closer than 12 inches to the structure. I'm getting a battery indicator, so this is probably not going to be as long of a video as I was planning on doing. We might have two exterior videos. That's okay. That's okay. We'll get it done. All these bushes, okay, they're away from the house. So that's not going to make the wood destroying insect report. They're close, but they're not away. But we do have debris. We do have wood mulch and debris in the flower beds, and that is below the drain lines. That's conducive to wood destroying insects. I have this right here. You can see it. See that little crack in there? Okay, that's called a shrinkage crack. Some people call them corner pops. Call it what you will. But what happens is, is the sidewalk, oh, excuse me, the foundation, it's always drying. The Hoover Dam just dried a couple years ago. I read about it. So I guess it does dry eventually. This house isn't nearly as old as the Hoover Dam. This is continuously drying. Your sub foundation is continuously shrinking. You'll never be able to measure it. Same thing with the bricks. Uh, that's the only part of your home that actually grows. And you'll never be able to measure that. You know, because it's porous. And so then what happens here is we have a plastic liner. Probably should be steel, but we're, it's not the way we do it here. It's not the Texas way. So anyway... We have a, a, a plastic flashing that goes between the brick and the cement. Um, the brick and cement also, also expand and contract at different rates.
because of the physical properties of them. So thanks to their growing and shrinking and, and, and ex expanding and contracting at different levels, these, these slide along this plane and we have this flashing that never goes to the corners. So, you know, that has shrinkage cracks on the corners. It's very common, very common. It's not a foundation problem. If it's in the span of a hand, I don't know whose hand, and it's going back that way, that way, then that's not a foundation problem. You might want to fix it. It might be holding up your bricks, but it's not a foundation problem. If we had other cracks, that would be another story. It would be another story. Coming along. I'm going to get it from the other side, but then get it from here. Irrigation pipe. If your lawn sprinkler system, it's supposed to be below the frost line. It's not supposed to be on top of the ground like that. In Texas, our frost line is like one inch, I don't know, zero. It's still not supposed to be on top of the ground. This retaining wall is closer to the house than twice its height, actually. It's cutting it off a close. It's cutting it off a close. But let's just pretend like it's closer than it is. And it's not. In theory, this shouldn't even affect the home. But the foundation, excuse me. I'm not mentioning quality of life and things, but anyway, but let's just say that it is close enough. Um, it still looks like it's in good shape. I still can't determine whether we've got um, tiebacks installed or geo thread. Um, there's the main water shutoff valve for the house. You're going to see that in another video. That's the lawn sprinkler um, backflow prevention device. We're going to see that in another video. These are the uh, double clean-outs. You're going to see that in another video. But what you're not going to see in another video, and I haven't seen yet, and I haven't seen yet, maybe I will, but I have not seen a vacuum breaker for the swimming pool filter. If you backwash it, now, that's a modular system. It might not require backwashing. It might not. But if you drain the pool, where's the water going to go? Where's the water going to go if you drain the pool? I don't know. I'm not finding it. I have a little bit of movement on the front walkway. Four or more steps should have a handrail. Four or more steps should have a handrail. I haven't seen the garage yet, so I have not checked the GFCI yet. But there is power there. And we have our weep holes. But we don't have a weep holes up here. Just like before. Just like before. This window ledge, does it have two degrees pitch on it? Looks close. Looks close. Two degrees pitch. That's all we're looking for. We don't want the water on our going into the wall. We want the water going away from the house. Okay. One degree. One degree is not two. One degree is not two. I thought that. I thought that looked awful low. We probably played on pool tables that are not as level as that ledge. So we've got that, and a little bit of cracking right here between the stretcher bricks and the sailor bricks. This is the front window. The front window. And speaking of which, I'm looking for examples. Water's still not discharging far enough away. We just came across the front, the south side of the house. We started on the east. We're coming on along. When we see these little spots, we know this is a post tension cable slab. There's different types. There's different types. But um, we know this is a post tension cable. We know at least that on grade. And coming on along, because I like to back things up. I'm running out of battery. Shouldn't, shouldn't be making moves like this. Shouldn't be making moves like this. But right in here in these bushes next to this window. See that in there? I've got a still image of it. That's some erosion right in there. That's some erosion. That's not a tension cable landing. You can see the tape. tension cable end a little high into the left of that. Now we can carry on. Living dangerously. 
front porch, south, creek. Moving on along, we got some a little bit of separation right there. We've also got some cracking and peeling paint. That's the clothes dryer vent right here. And just looking at it from here, you just know that's clogged with the lint. That needs to be cleaned. It does. Coming on along. This is probably the vent for the kitchen. On the west wall, this is the breakfast area. Okay. See that? Those marks on the mountains right in there. seal is gone between the two panes of glass. When you lose your seal on these windows, you do not lose any efficiency. People say, oh, you lose efficiency. Oh, you won't be able to measure that. You don't lose any security. It's ugly. It's ugly. Seals are broken. Not that one. That one is. You see that right in there? Seal's broken. Come on along. Sprinkler heads are too close again. We're going to talk about the air conditioning soon enough. Soon enough. This one over here, he's not very level. I just can't help myself, can I? Gas enters the house on the west side. There's the main shutoff valve for the gas. If this is parallel, it's on. If it's perpendicular, it's off. And that's just about any valve like that. That includes your uh, water video we're about to watch. Um, coming on and on. Metal overhead car doors. Fence touching house. Oasis, I mean swimming pool. Wood mulch next to house. A little bit of negative drainage here, but you gotta drain away from the pool. Gotta drain away from the pool and we have a we have a drain over here. It's missing this grate. Plugging along, we still got battery. Okay, moving along here still, we still do not have we close over these windows. Moving along, tree closer than oh, it's a bush. Tree, tree closer, chimney place closer than 25 feet to structure. Some more of the siding we were talking about, the butt seams we were talking about, the rock we were talking about.